you're going to find that I cry a lot. Sorry. I'll try to keep talking so it might be a little squeaky, but it'll come out. That's just who I am. you got you to gotta accept it. Sorry. Um, but we're so hungry to learn about Jesus. Is there anyone interested in joining us, helping us, steering us, and guiding us? And taking an interest in our salvation? Wow. Like I was blown away, you know? I was blown away that there's a person, and I, and I hated the fact that I wasn't even prepared for that. You know? It's like you got a person pouring their heart out. And I'll be honest with you, I've tried to reach out to this guy, King, and figure out where he's at. You know? Because I was like, hey, it's here, it's here. But it's like, I don't know what happened to the guy. I mean, I don't want that to happen again. And that, that is really the heart behind this, is I want people to be tooled up, you know. I don't want, you know, it, you always, you think a lot about uh, your life. You may hear, you know, see some cool story or something or some movie or something like that. And a lot of times they'll talk about what did that person accomplish after they passed away or something like that. And it's like, I don't want more than anything, I, I don't want that all this time that God's invested in me to go to the wayside. It's like, yeah, it's helped me in my life, but it needs to help other people. Mm. You know, and, and that is the concept of discipleship. Okay? And that's what this class is about. I struggled with the, the, the name of it actually. I wasn't sure what to call it. And originally it was um, discipleship training course, you know, and I'm like, okay, that, that about matches about uh, 550,000, you know, <laughs> titles. So it's like, okay, that ain't gonna work. You know, so we start thinking of something else, deep dive is what stood. But it, it truly is a discipleship course. And I fully believe that you will get something out of it if you'll apply yourself to it. I think that you will see your walk with God uh, grow deeper. Um, right out of the gate, I want to talk a little bit um, about there's two scriptures. This is one scripture. My mom and I were talking about it, but somebody look up uh, Psalm 34, 8. Oh! Anyone wants to read? We're good. Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. The key is is that God is something, and, and you guys know this if you've been in the faith for any length of time, but God is something that once you experience it, okay, once you experience a closeness with God, you just want that, okay? It's like, I'm not going to say that you cannot get cold again, because you can. You know, I can tell you my wife and I, I mean, we've been married over 30 years, and I can tell you for sure if uh, we, we experience this when I travel, sometimes I'll be out of town for one or two weeks with travel, and uh, when that happens, we come back and then the relationship's cooled down. You know, we have to kind of reconnect. And that can happen with God. But what, I, what I'm telling you for sure is that the scripture's true, and that once you get a taste of who God is and what He has for you, you, you start to get that taste, and that is like a fire on the inside. If you'll keep fanning it, we're going to go through this this course. It's going to take us about three months. If you start, if you do what I'm asking you to do while we're going through this, you're going to start a fire inside of you, okay? And you're going to be fanning these coals over three months. You know, if you look at any of the documentation on habits and things like that, they talk about the number of weeks it takes to do a habit. We're going well beyond that, okay? So you've got the opportunity if you'll apply this, that you you've got the opportunity to be fanning this flame for over three months which is going to seriously create some habits in your life that will make a difference in your life. Guaranteed. Okay? So, um, another one I wanted to kind of point out, it's, it's in the notes there in the, uh, at the beginning, but Luke chapter 18, 17, it says, uh, and I'm going to have give you a chance to look it up, and if somebody wants to read it when you find it. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Was that Lou? That sounded like song. She's trying to get her Bible on there, and I don't know how to work it. <laughs> she said eighteen seventeen. Yes, please. I tell you the truth: anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God is like a child. Uh, I'm gonna start that over. Thank you. I tell you the truth: anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. 
Okay. You, you know this this scripture the um, apostle the apostles some people were coming around. Little kids start coming up to Jesus and and the apostles are like, get them away. You know, leave them alone. Keep them away. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. Let let them come over to me. Okay. Jesus wanted to spend time with them. And this scripture, when you think about it, it's telling you, okay, it's saying you got to receive it like those little kids are, okay? And what are some characteristics of how kids are? Let me just throw it out there. Six-year-old comes up. What, very curious. Mm -hmm. Very curious. What else? They don't have filters. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> they don't have filters. They're going to say what they think. They trust. They trust. They trust. And tell them something, they believe it. One of our jobs as parents is don't trust everybody, right? You teach them that, but they trust, right? They're unassuming. You know, they're not, when they went up to Jesus, they, the reality is they probably didn't know any difference between him and anyone else. They didn't think, oh, he's holy. You know, they just went up to him, hey, I just want to go, that guy seems like a nice guy. I want to go hang with him. You know, and that's how God says for us to approach him. And that's the, that's the thing is, we're not... We should be working towards a relationship with God because we want to get to know Him. That, that is really the root of it. Don't let it be a hidden motive. Don't let, when, you, when you're going through this stuff, start to love God in it, okay? Don't let, our, don't let yourself get caught up into, like homework, for example. One of the most common things, and I fall in this trap myself all the time, right? I want to spend time in the Word every day, and it starts to come, become a routine. And before you know it, I've turned on the Bible app and let it play out my scriptures, you know, that I listen to in the day, and I can't even tell you what they said. Don't let it become a routine. When you're going through your homework and you're doing your different things, think about God. Think about building a relationship with somebody because He is a person. Well, He is, right? Three persons. We'll get into that later. But it's like He is an actual person, an actual relationship. And when, and when we're working on this relationship with him, remember that. Remember it's a relationship, and you're in it just because you're interested in him. You want to get to know him better. You want to be coming as a child to him. That's the key. Okay? Um, a little bit about your materials. So every week, I'm going to give you a new section to add to this. Okay? And, and it, they're all kind of broken out in the same way. Um, well, actually, I guess a bigger picture. That's your folder. You can take it home with you, put your name on it. In case you don't have a journal book, that's a little notebook. You can take some notes in. Um, <laughs> like being in college, huh? Where it's just checked out. What, what's that? Oh, sorry. You've got to fall out of a seat because there's a lot to do today. I thought this was the whole I, He course. wasn't on the messaging. You thought this was the whole course? This is all brand new today. <laughs> so. So basically what, what, what happens is there's, there's different topics, and if you go to um, the first two, first two pages are basically uh, just an introduction. We'll finish going through that in a moment. Then you get into the notes. The notes are really the meat of the content, okay? And we'll go through those notes. Our goal is we're going to take it at a pace that we're going give, to give way to God. We're going to let God drive this course in the pace that he wants to. Um, that like I'll have expectations for each day, but we're going to see how far we get. In this case today, I'm hoping to do salvation. Okay, this whole this whole topic. If you go to page nine, I'm going to kind of give you a little hint here. So the way this is how your homework's always going to be broken up. You're going to have daily things that you're that we're wanting you to do. Okay. And they're going to be very similar in most cases. There might be uh, targeted reading, like in this case we're going through Romans 5 and 5 through 10. Okay, but there's reading, you're going to hear it routine, 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 routine. Reading, praying, worship, thinking, thinking and journaling. Th those are your key things. Because I want you to start to get used to doing that every single day. Okay? That's a daily routine. In addition to that, there's review questions. Those review questions, I'll tell you now, they're not intended to be hard, they're not deep, they're not, they're just really intended to help you think about the material. You can fill those out as you go through the, through the material, because you're going to see they line up, okay? You know, like you're going to see today we're going to be talking about what's inherited guilt, what's inherited corruption, what's atonement, you know? And you, it depends on, I, we purposefully did this to try to help you guys, because two hours can be a long time, and one person talking can sound 
droning. Hopefully I'm not going to be that way to you. But, you know, some people like to fill in the blank as you go. It keeps you awake. It make, makes you think more about it. Um, some people enjoy doing it as a review item afterwards because I, I would like for you to review this every week. Um, and then the deeper dive questions, as they say, they're more thought provoking. That's more of something you probably, I don't see how you would keep up with that inside of the class, but it's more about go home, <laughs> give it some thought, think about it, and really think about it, and then write about your experience with there. Okay? Um, that's how the material is going to be broken up all the time. And, and like I said, I'll give you a new section every time we start a new topic. There's a couple topics that are going to take multiple weeks to go through. Uh, I'll, give them, I'll give you all of that at the same time. Um, at a high level, these are the topics that we're going to cover. And I, and I say at a high level because the reality is, is they could change. Because I've got the, the last topic I'm working on now is I'm thinking it through still. So I still am writing it. Um, so it could change. But the ones that I've got right now are salvation, this one. And the next one we're going through is the Bible. So there we're going to get we're going to get into all the different angles you can think about about the Bible. Speaking of the Bible, I know uh, Mike Plain made mention of this on Sunday, but if you don't have a Bible, and I don't mean I know everybody's got a Bible here probably, okay? And I rely on this all the time, so I'm not knocking it, okay? I highly encourage you, if you haven't got a study Bible, start thinking about trying to get one. Because there's something about looking, th there's, there's just so much stuff around what you're reading to help you out and help you understand something, you know. Um, and you can do that on these. I mean, they've got study Bibles as well. I just want to encourage you to get used to using a Bible for a little bit, especially during this course. Because I think when it comes to home study, that will, when you're really studying, a study Bible is going to help you out in more ways than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about the Bible. That's the second thing. The third thing is how do you study the Bible? Okay, we're going to cover all kinds of stuff there. We're going to talk about um, different tools. Like we'll, at that point, we'll be demonstrating up here on the this screen all the variety of electronic things. You know, uh, uh, BibleGateway.com, um, the Bible Project. We're going to talk through, you know, things on your phone like the um, uh, what's it called, the Blue Letter Bible, um, those apps. We're going to be talking about um, physically a study Bible, like the various parts of it. You know, how to use concordances, how to how the, how the footnote structures work, and what can you expect out of what you're reading there. How the commentaries are, um, all these different things, exhaustive concordances, and all that. So we're going to talk a whole lot about. Um, all of the ways to study the Bible and and what kind of things are important you know like when you're reading a book of the Bible knowing knowing what's going on in the in the country at the time uh, knowing who the author was um, knowing all these different things like that that's really important it sets the stage for what the people what they're talking about you know um, we're going to talk about the Greek and Hebrew we're not going to become Hebrew and Greek scholars but it's very important I'm going to show you an example of uh, of a scripture that I recently went through in my men's study where we were misinterpreting the scripture and only when one of the guys said you know if you go and look at the the original Greek and Hebrew on this and it, and it was re really interesting but we actually got a completely different idea out of what was going on there and it was funny to me because that situation came back and like all the time that I've heard this story something wasn't making sense to me. And I heard finally this other perspective because we looked at the original Greek and Hebrew, it was amazing. It was like, it suddenly, like, oh, now it fits. That makes sense. You know, it didn't make sense before. So we'll go through that. That's the third topic. That's how to study the Bible. We're going to talk about sanctification. Anybody got a definition of what that is off the top of your head? Anyone? It's the Holy Spirit making you holy. Pretty much. It's, it's God. It's the process when you when you signed up to become a Christian, guess what? You signed up to become sanctified, to make to make you more like Jesus. Okay, because that's our goal. Our our goal, every one of us, when we get saved, is is we're to be we were created for the glory of God, and in doing that, the way we do that is the is becoming more like Him, and that's this process of sanctification. So we've got a whole section on what does that look like in a Christian's life. Okay, what kind of expectations are there? We're trying to set some of that in 
stay in place with the homework up front because I want you to start experiencing it right now, but, but a lot of that is part of your sanctification process, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about who God is. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of The Knowledge of the Holy. We're, we're going to talk about that book by A.W. Tozer. Um, goes through all the different attributes of God. So we're going to talk about all of his attributes, things like immutability, omniscience, all these different words and what they mean and what, what kind of uh, assurance that gives us as humans dealing with a God who's all-powerful and all-superior to us. Each of these, when you start to learn these attributes, you start to get a different perspective on who God is. And you start to discover who, who he really is, which is a very comforting thing. Okay? We're going to talk about faith. All kinds of stuff there. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then the last topic that we've got in the Holy Spirit, we're going to come from a lot of different angles. We're going to talk about um, what happens when you become saved. We're going to talk about what happens... Um, uh, we're going to talk about the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the um, the uh, fruit of the Spirit. We're going to talk about all these different perspectives, baptism and the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about all these different things, okay? And I'm going to bring all the scriptures to the table for you there. The last one we're going to talk about that I think we're going to have to talk about right now, this one I've written, is uh, end times. So it's going to be really high level. We're not going to get into it. The last time I did an end time study, it took me six months. So we're not going to get into the, the weeds on that. But I felt like it was necessary to tell you what kind of things are supposed to be happening in the future. Jesus felt like it was a necessary thing when he was talking. Um, I feel like it, because of that, it's also a necessary thing. And we won't get way into that. I'm not going to talk about any kind of uh, Jesus is coming back on such and such a date or anything like that. Um, it's not that, but it is talking about things like the uh, millennium reign and it's uh, the tribulation and the millennial reign and talking about the, the great white throne judgment and you know, different things like that just to kind of give you placeholders. A lot of it's going to be from Revelation, but placeholders of what to expect into the future. And so that you can also kind of be cognizant of that because it does influence you into the future. You know, so that's kind of the high level set of topics that we're going to be coming, going over. Okay. Okay. The um, I think we covered the goals, um, the requirements. Okay. So, so when we were saying there's homework and stuff like that, these are your requirements. And the reality is, is I need you to think about them seriously because the the key is, is if you don't do these things you won't be getting what, what you can get out of this course. That's just reality. Now, I don't have a problem personally if somebody wants to sit in the course just to learn, you know, to hear about all the different topics and stuff like that. But if you want to experience that tran transformation in your life, these are the things that will cause you to do that. And so I wanted to go through those one at a time. First one is, is we're going to meet here once a week. When you're out of town, you're out of town. We'll have it videoed so that you can actually come and uh, can listen to it, watch it, and we'll make the, the resources available as well. Uh, but it's meeting here. It's attending church services. When the doors are open, we're here. Okay, so Sunday, worship services, those are our two services essentially, um, but we need to be here for those. Okay? Um, without, or, or throughout the week, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Church Center app, um, if it's on your phone already, that's great. If it's not and you have a mobile smartphone, um, we want to get it on there. But I would really like to encourage discussion in the chat about things, just things. It can be about life. It can be a prayer request. But especially as you're doing your homework and stuff like that, God's going to start talking to you guys. And I'd like to hear about it, you know. I'd like for that to be active. The best discussion group I've seen so far is this men's group chat that thing is just like blows up every once in a while you know sometimes people are joking in it and it's fun and sometimes there uh, there's some serious questions aren't they <laughs> I mean they're like heavy some heavy requests. stuff yeah, it's heavy. yeah you know and um, but it's it's great it's a great example I think it's great that men are the one doing it too that dumbfounds me even more so but uh, anyway I'd like to see that inside of our chat so I encourage you talk in that uh, let's see Every semester, or during the semester, I'm sorry, every every 
tonight, excluding tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to assign, we're going to randomly start assigning people to somebody needs to hear from God for the group for the next week. Okay, so the concept is, is if, if we look at the agenda, which is on the next page, you look at the agenda, there's time right at the beginning in the typical agenda where we're, we're each going to take turns praying. Okay, when you're talking to God, and hopefully you don't get anxiety over this, okay, because it's talking to God. And I know it's in front of people, I know that. But I mean, you know, you can, you can pray to God and you can say, God, I love you bless these people. Amen. I mean, that's praying to God. That's talking to God. It's not a big deal. But you got to get comfortable with talking to God and not be embarrassed of that. Because what if somebody comes up to you and says, I need you to pray for me? Are you going to run off and try to go find somebody? You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is uh, that somebody is no better than you. The Holy Spirit's inside of you when you're saved. And that's who, that's your connecting there. And, and that's part of this teaching and training. That concept. Okay? So, um, so we're going to be praying and and praying out loud at times, and we're going to be talking about just listen to God. I'm telling you, if you t if you take the time to listen to God, He will speak to you, guaranteed. And it may be somebody might come in, and I might have to time bomb them. I got 10 minutes on the schedule, right? Other times, seriously, someone might come in and say, the only thing I got was this real long silence, you know, and that's it. I don't know. I don't know how, God, but I, but I think that if you ask God to speak to you, some, God will actually tell you something for this class, and I think that's an exercise, and I think you need to see that. If you're, if right now what I'm saying, just like on the inside is causing a knot in your stomach, okay, my suggestion is take that to God because my guess is, you, what you've got going on right there is a spiritual battle. You got your flesh fighting your spirit. I think your Holy Spirit on the inside is thinking, finally. Finally, somebody's pushing them, you know? And I think you got your flesh saying, uh-uh, you're not getting control of this ship. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to break those, bound, those boundaries and those bond, those, the binding that's happening there. We're trying to loosen you up and let the Holy Spirit start to work in your life. Because that's what he's really looking for. Um, the next one here is review lessons and complete the homework. So I already showed you the homework. And then reviewing the lessons, like I said, the first section, the little questions, that all that's going to do is just walk you right back through your homework, or through the lesson, from beginning to end. Those, those will be very obvious question and answers to you. Okay, so that's more just helping you to do that. And then back to the daily habits again. You'll see this at the end. I showed you it in the homework, but it's praying, spending time in the Bible, worshiping, and journaling. Okay? Uh, let's see, our class... As far as the uh, agenda, it's from 6 to 8, so it's a little bit longer than the Wednesday nights. You know, it's two hours. We're going to try to break um, in the middle. So if I look at the, if we look at the agenda here, um, we're going to pray, which I should have done that already. Yes? Does that break say five minutes? Yes. I'm you and you, dude. <laughs> we get six. I get a minimum of fifteen. Oh my God! <laughs> your, your, break, your break's gonna overlap the first half of the session and overlap the second half of the session. Four hour work day. Oh, there you go. Thank you. They showed you could take it at the end. <laughs> yeah. Before I clock out. <laughs> That's a good idea too. Okay, so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up with prayer, which, again, I should have probably already did that. Um, I'm going to, well, we'll do it before we start on the content. Um, we're going to talk about, we're going to give an opportunity. If you, in your in your homework and stuff, you kind of come up with a question or you have a comment you want to share or anything like that, That's that's there's going to be a little bit of time for that. Um, we're also going to talk about, this is the part I was talking about, one person per week is going to take time to see what God's saying, and this is your time. Okay, so I've given 10 minutes for that to just talk about what God has told you. Okay, so you're going to have the floor. Um, then we're going to go into some study for 45 minutes, going through the notes. We're going to break. Let everybody stretch their legs, wake up, shake it off. And then we're going to go back into study. And then at the end, take five minutes just to review um, the homework and reminders uh, and stuff like that. Okay, and then we're going to pray and close. That's, that's your typical night. Any questions about any of that? Okay. 
Um, so let's start with praying. Let's start with praying and let's identify who's going to talk next week. And I'll just start by asking, do I have any volunteers for either one of those things? And of course, if we don't get any volunteers, I'm just going to randomly assign somebody. <laughs> so, any volunteers? Anybody want to pray? Just to open us up. I would. Amanda? I would pray. Gotcha. Okay, anybody want to seek God for us? Tell us what you heard for next week. Matt. <laughs> I can go to Pretty sure you just volunteered yourself. <laughs> you want to hear from me? Do you want to start it, Randy? <laughs> no, I don't want to start it. <laughs> you can. I'll do it the last week, maybe. <laughs> anyway? I'll do it. Okay. Okay. And then I need somebody to pray at the end. Who wants to pray? pray at the end of the thing tonight? Thank you. Okay. So... Amanda, let's All right, pray. here we go. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to come together tonight. Thank you for, I am so excited, and I pray that other people feel the excitement, and um, God, I pray that you would reveal to each of us what we need to hear. I pray that you would speak to us in a unique way, in a way that you haven't done before and that we would become closer to you, and that we would become closer to one another, and that this group of people would feel safe with one another, and we would be able to share, and we would be able to feed off of one another and find support in one another. And so, God, I pray that as we start this group together and we start our study today, that we feel your presence and you are with us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So one of the things I, I was thinking about when I when I first put these topics together, I kind of thought, oh, okay, you know, I know those things, so I'll be able to talk to them and all that. You would you would be amazed at how much I learned over the time. I started working on the material, started thinking about it last year, started working on the material at the beginning of this summer, and it's taken me that long to write it, and I have just been so impacted by it myself in my own life and it happens anytime you try to teach something you all know that and uh, but it's like the word when I started digging in on the word on all these different topics I mean salvation like we've all expected you know that was so many years ago and it's like we've talked about it for however many years I'm 52 three thanks for the correction <laughs> um, I'm 53 but it's like I mean probably I've been talking about it for 40 years you know, it's like, what else can I learn about it? But I'm, I'm challenging you, if you've been in the faith for a long time, every single topic, approach it like it's fresh to you. Okay, let God speak to you in it. Because I believe you will find, I believe you will learn something in every one of these topics. I think they're all, when, it, when I went over the list, a lot of you may have thought, oh, credit, you know, that, that doesn't sound new to me, you know? But the reality is, is we know that the Word of God is powerful and effective, you know? And that... It, it like it's weird it's like you've all experienced how you read a scripture today and you hear something out of it that speaks to you and then give it five years give it a year you know and you read that same scripture and it's like he speaks in some new way to you through that scripture he'll do that in these topics as well okay